Do you hear that? It is super, super quiet. That is 42 decibels right there. And it's really quiet, just how I like it. Hey, welcome back to From Scratch Ranch. Previously, you saw us install those lower kitchen cabinets behind me here. And also that farmhouse sink, that really cool black granite composite farmhouse sink. Yep, got that from Wayfair.com. Also the faucet above. It's a great commercial type faucet. Love it, got that from Wayfair.com also. If you haven't seen those videos, check out the link above. Also, if you're interested in those products, there's links below to those specific products. We also got the black granite countertops installed. They look fantastic. Now it's time for the dishwasher. So we've got the Samsung Stormwash Top Control Low Decibel Dishwasher. I needed low decibel. That's what I really, really was going for. It's on the pricier side. This thing runs from between like seven and $800. Um, and I needed low decibel because we're in a barnuminium that's an open floor plan. So with the loft bedrooms, the living space down here that we're gonna be hanging out, our last house, our dishwasher was super loud and super annoying. So I needed to get something that was the lowest decibel I can find. And this Samsung Stormwash dishwasher is a 42 decibel. So it is really quiet or is supposed to be really, really quiet. So we'll see. So with that, let's get started. All right, so if we take a look at the back side of the dishwasher, you'll find that it came with the drain line and that's it. That's all that's there is the drain line connected here. So I can drain the dishwasher, but there's no power, there's no power cord to it and there's no water line. So if you're buying a new dishwasher and installing it yourself and you're not replacing an existing one where you can pull parts off of, you'll need to buy an installation kit that includes a couple things here. We've got the power cord right here so it's three wire power cord just for the dishwasher and this would be a dishwasher installation kit that you can find at the store so it's got the two hot wires and one common and you'll need the clamp for the metal box to attach the wire to and then wire nuts obviously to wire it up right and then you'll have the water line so this is a dishwasher water line uh, the one uh, thing about this one it came with the dishwasher came with this elbow here on the end. And this is specific to this dishwasher. So it might be common for many of them, but the dishwasher did come with this elbow. So with that, let's get installing the power cord first. Okay, a couple things to note is the outlet. I had the electrician install power down here knowing I was gonna install a dishwasher. So I have the receptacle ready to go to plug the dishwasher into. And also when I installed the cabinets, I cut a hole in the side of the cabinet back there. So that way I have access to the sink drain so I can bring my dishwasher hose, uh, drain hose through the side of the cabinet there and into the drain. So that's all set up and ready to go. So the first thing we need to do is install the power cord here. So what we need to do is find the electrical box on the dishwasher here, locate that and attach our wires. Okay, so according to the instructions, the electrical box should be right under the right side here and sure enough, there it is right there. So we'll remove that cover and get our wires connected. Okay, to make this a little bit easier than doing this on the ground, I'm just gonna tip this over on its side so I can get access to the panel. And also I need to put the wire through a channel in the bottom. So I need to put it on its side. So next we need to put the clamp on the wire here. So this is a clamp connector. So it clamps on one side, tighten down the screws, and then the other side connects to the box. So we just need to feed the wires through the end here on the clamp side, make sure the threaded part with the nut on it is on the wire end of it, the end of the wire. Push that on, give yourself enough to work with inside the box to make the connections. And then we'll tighten up the clamp. like so, and then remove the nut. So unscrew that, take that off because this has got to go back on after we feed this through the box and then we'll tighten it on with the nut. Okay, so then we'll take our wire and put it through the hole of the box, the bottom hole there. And our clamp goes in like that. So the connector fits on like that and then the nut over the end of the wires and just screw that on nice and tight. Like so, okay. Now we can make our connections. We've got a little bit of a dilemma here. 
these wires coming out of the dishwasher are color coded, right? I got my black is hot, my white is my neutral, and my green is my ground. But the kit came with this wire here for the dishwasher that just has three unmarked wires or uncolored wires. So I've got to figure out which one is the hot and then also which one is the neutral and ground. So I know looking at this, inspecting the wire in the center here, the center wire, it does say ground only on there. I know you probably won't be able to read that on the camera, but it does say that. Is that really though the, the ground or is that just the marking on the whole cable? Well, if I look at the middle cable here, I do see a little bit of a green in there. So I'm thinking that one is the ground for sure. On the other two though, there is no indication of any like colored jacket underneath there. Um, I also know that on the plug side, the middle one is the ground. So, okay, I'm pretty certain that the middle one is ground. Now for the other two, which one's hot, which one's neutral? Well, there's one way to tell. The industry standard is that the ribbed side, if you look closely at that, and I'm hoping this is picking it up on camera, but this is ribbed. That ribbed side is different than the other side where it's smooth, okay? So on the ribbed side, that's your neutral. That's the white wire. And then the smooth side is your hot wire. Okay, so that's just an industry standard to know. It's good to know. Um, but also, if we wanted to really test it, we could go plug this in, run power through it, and then use this non-contact voltage detector to see which wire is actually having power flow through. So before I do that, though, we're going to put some wire nuts on the end of these wires so we don't have just live wires hanging out here. Very dangerous. Okay, so everything's safe there. Now I'm gonna go plug this in. So now there's power flowing through these wires. And if I test this top wire first, which is the ribbed one, turn it on first. If I get close to this top wire here, which is the ribbed one, it's green, I got nothing. The middle one, nothing. The one on the left is smooth, there it goes, hot. So, yep, that's the industry standard. The ribbed is your neutral. There's no power flowing through that right now. And the other smooth side is your hot wire and I got power going through. So that means I need to connect the smooth one to the black wire here and then the other to the white. But before I do anything, I need to go and plug it. Safety, <laughs> that would be bad if I started doing my wiring without remembering to unplug that. Okay, so now that I'm safe, it's unplugged, I can take these wire nuts off. And okay, the smooth is the top one here. So I'll bring my black wire up to here and make this connection. Nice and tight. Make sure you pull on a little bit, a little tug test to make sure it's in there tight. Okay, now my white wire goes to the bottom ribbed side. Nice and tight. Finally, my ground wire to the middle wire. Make sure everything's nice and tight. Okay, now we just stuff all this back in there and put our cover back on. Like so. Okay, now the instructions say to take the cable and put it behind these clips on the bottom here, like so. And that'll hold that in place under the dishwasher. And have that come out the back. Okay, now we'll tip it back up and hook up our water line. All right, get this back up right. And then on this side is where we have our water. And that's gonna come in right here. And this one is fairly simple to install. Just like a hose. Make sure that's really good and tight, hand tight. Okay. All right, now we have our water line, our drain, and our power. And our water line. Get everything close in so we can get in here and push the water line under the 
sink there. And also take our drain line. Now we're gonna have to carefully push all this back. And also at the same time, in the sink here, pull through so that the slack doesn't get smashed. So now that I've pushed my dishwasher in, um, before I hook everything up, I've noticed that I've got this big gap right here between my granite and my dishwasher. And I had the granite installers install this dishwasher bracket, I guess, onto the granite. It's meant for the granite here, where it was just, they had drilled into the granite and screwed that in and everything, and into the side of the cabinet here. But the problem is, there's still that giant gap. So. I'm not sure why this is higher than what the dishwasher is. I tried raising the legs on the dishwasher, but it doesn't go high enough to do that. So I think um, what I'm gonna do is, I had a leftover piece of some of this cabinet wood that I had removed from this uh, base sink section here to accommodate the farmhouse sink. Um, it was a piece that went across right here. And so I took that out so I can build that sink there. If you haven't seen that video, check it out, the link above. Um, but I'm gonna use that piece he here now. Now it's a little bit too big, so I'm gonna have to measure this and rip it down to the right height and also the right width. Um, and then we'll use uh, the pocket hole um, drill to drill some holes through here and connect it into the sides. Okay, so now I wanna rip this board down the lengthwise, where that line's at. I've set up my guide. I have a makeshift guide with a piece of wood here some clamps because I'm missing my actual guide. All right, so now we're gonna test fit this to make sure it's gonna fit. Great. Yeah, that's gonna look better. All right, so now I'm gonna drill my pocket holes in there so I can screw this into the sides of the cabinets. Okay, this is a pocket hole jig that I just picked up on Amazon. Uh, there's a link below if you're interested. Um, and this is the piece of wood that I need to put a pocket hole in, which means I need to drill a hole this way at an angle and so that the screw won't show. The screw head will be kind of under the wood there. So the way this works is you just put this on the edge and I've already measured it to the length I want. The drill bit will go into that hole there. There's two here for two holes if it was a wide piece of wood. Make sure that the right here is where you wanna make sure it's center, because that's where the out the screw will come out. And you just clamp it, like so. Make sure it's straight. This is a small piece of wood. And then there's a special drill bit here, also a link below, um, that will create this pocket hole. Okay, so now I should be able to see it yep, poke out the end, like so. Just enough to where the screw will come through that hole there. You back it out. Okay, and just release the clamp. Get off. There we go, now we got a nice little pocket hole to screw that screw through. Now I just gotta do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so we want the pocket holes on the bottom side. Get that right up in there against granite. Great, so we got that piece in. Now we could put everything back through. So the way these brackets work, there are three holes, as you can see here, three holes in the side, on each side. And that's just so you can access it with your drill or screwdriver but the bracket actually goes on this side. It's not very clear in the instructions, but so this clips in like so. And so this is too long. So I need to break this off. And you can see there's a, a, a score on that side and the instructions say just use some pliers and pop that out. This is meant for a different, it gives you the option for a different dishwasher, so. Okay, so on the side here, we've got the hole and then there's this little notch so this clip just goes in there like so 
and then like that. And it just, that just holds it. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Just like so. Now they only gave me two. So there's an option to put another one down here, but I think as long as it's anchored on the top, then it will keep it from tipping. That's all we really need. Okay, so then we slide this back in. Like so, till it's, till it's flush with the cabinet side. Okay, and then now, before I actually screw it in, I need to make sure that the dishwasher is level this way and this way. So, let me show you how to do that. Okay, so I've got my level here. So this way is pretty simple. So it looks like I'm a little high on the right side or low on the left side. So I need to adjust my left side up just a little bit. Okay, now we should be good. Good. Now, the tricky part. How do I get it to level front to back. So there's a key down here that I can turn that will raise and lower a single leg in the back side to help the front to back. You don't want it leaning to the front at all. If anything, just tilt it back slightly, but it should be level. You don't want it to the front because you don't want water to come towards the door. So in order to measure level front to back, we can actually just do it by measuring plumb. If I put it on the door, or on the frame and measure my plumb, I'm plumb, which means I'm level front to back. It means the same thing. If I'm plumb this way, then I'm level this way. We're good to go. So now with the door open, I have this little hole here, an access point to get to that bracket that I just put on the back side here. And that's what we're gonna put our screws into. Either so I'm gonna use my drill to drill a pilot hole through that bracket hole. Put my screw. Yep, that felt tightened up. I'll do the same thing on this side. So now that we have it anchored properly, I need to put a plug in these three holes that they provide. So these little plastic plugs, just so no water will get through there. Even though there's a seal on the door, it's just in case. So I removed the hot, what goes up to the sink, off the main hot water after I've turned it off. And what I need to do is add this T into here so I can then connect my dishwasher line to. So first I need to just wrap some Teflon tape around everything. So I think first what I'm gonna do is connect the dishwasher line. Okay. Then I will place the T on here on the hot. Finally, we'll make our hot water connection to the top. So we've got plugged in to power. We've got our drain now to hook up. Okay, so with the drain, one important thing is to make sure that the drain line goes up and then back down to the dishwasher. So you don't want this to be down and, and around. It needs to be all the way up as high as it can go up in there and then plugged into here. And the reason is, is the pump will pump the water back out into the drain and you don't want it to backflow back in. So you don't want to dip here. You want it to be up. The pump will push it out, so that's fine. You just don't want it to come back down into the bottom of the dishwasher. So, um, and before I put this on though, I need to put this uh, hose clamp on the end of this hose. 
like so. And I'll go ahead and just tighten this down as much as I can. Okay, all right, so now we'll push drain line onto this T in the main drain stack. And you wanna get it all the way on past all of those barbs that were on that T right here. Okay, I think that's probably good. I wanna tighten this down. Make sure that's nice and tight. So that way it has no chance of popping off and draining all underneath your sink. Okay, so we are all connected. Drain is connected. I've got my loop up top and down. I've got power plugged in and I'm connected to the hot water. Hot water's off. So next thing to do is turn hot water on. And make sure there's no leaks. So we're on. No leaks in any of these connections. Let me turn the hot water on in the sink just to make sure we get some flow. No leaks in the drain, because I did move this around a little bit. Just want to make sure there's nothing coming out of here that I worked loose. And I believe we are done. So now it's just a matter of putting everything in here and testing it out. Okay, so lastly, we have the toe kick that needs to go in. And this rubber will just get pushed back like so. Toe kick goes over the front of it. So the rubber behind, and you can see the holes are being revealed right here and here. Okay. Okay, so I've loaded up some dishes in the dishwasher. What I really like is the nice big bottom rack. It's got the top rack that can go at different levels. And then the third rack up top for utensils and other small things that can go up there. So what's nice about this, this top rack here is that you can lift it up and it raises and locks. So then you have more room down below for your taller plates and whatnot. Um, and then to lower this, you just pull these little triggers on both sides and it lowers back up. Okay, we're good to go. So put a little pod in there. Close that up. Got the rinse aid in. Close her up, locked. And uh, actually before I do that, I'll show you the power. That turns it on and then we have auto, normal, heavy, delicate, express 60 for a fast wash and rinse only. We can do a lower rack only. Then there's the storm wash, which is the back corner on the bottom there. If you want to put your dirty pots and pans or something in there um, to get it really scrubbed good, that's where the storm wash is. You can do a high temp wash or sanitize. It also does have the delay start. Um, so you make your selections and hit start. So we'll close it up and then hit power. Two hours, 25 minutes is how long that cycle will go. And then we just click start. And it's got three lights on the front here. That first is the uh, rinse cycle, the wash cycle, and the dry cycle. We're doing a normal wash. So two hours, 25 minutes from now, should be nice and clean. Do you hear that? Yeah, that's super quiet. That is 42 decibels. I'm really happy with how quiet this thing is. So project complete, dishwasher is installed. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that subscribe button and the alert bell so you can stay up to date on everything we're doing out here at the ranch. So until next time, keep living the dream.